If you're interested in working with the Jamstack and a headless CMS, you might get a little bit overwhelmed by how many options there are. You could scroll on for a while here, but I'm gonna help you out and I'm gonna show you how to get started with an amazing product called Sanity IO. And I'm going to tell you my two favorite features about it as we walk through it together. So let's go ahead and get started. What's up everyone, it's James Q Quick, and today I'm gonna to show you how to get started with an amazing headless CMS called Sanity.io. Now, if you're new to the channel and you enjoy the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and then turn on the notification bell so that you can get the latest updates of content as it comes out. So before we dive into Sanity specifically, let's discuss what headless CMSs are and why you might wanna use one. So we're moving in this new world of Jamstack JavaScript APIs and markup. And it's and it's this real new way of thinking about how we build sites. And a lot of what that implies is using uh, static sites or using a static site generator to build static sites. In this case, we're gonna use Gatsby as our example. That's the one that I use a lot, but there's Next and Nuxt and Jekyll and Hugo and lots of other ones that are really, really popular as well. And the idea is with the static site generator, at build time, it's going to go to a data source of some sort, and it's going to get all the information for a blog, for example, all the blog posts, and it's going to statically, or go ahead and build static files for those different pages to represent those blog pages, so that with your static site in the end, it's really fast, it's secure, and all these other benefits, which are really, really amazing. And with a headless CMS, you get the ability to, to tease apart or really separate out your front end versus your back end. So you have your front end with whatever static site generator you wanna use, and then your back end can be a headless CMS in this case, where they give you some sort of dashboard to be able to manage your data, but they don't, they don't specifically tell you how to display your data in your actual site. So I've got, um, I've got a page open up here for Sanity that I really liked, and it's, it kind of targets itself as being a Jamstack CMS, breathing new life into the static site scene, uh, which I think is kind of fun, and it talks about Jamstack here and so on. So it talks about some of the, the industry leaders that are using Sanity. Um, it's got a great editor interface, I agree with this. Uh, you talk about something called portable text, which I won't get into very much, but portable text is a standard that Sanity created for storing rich text in a JSON object, which is really interesting. And because of that, and maybe I'll do a part two of this, because of that, you can get lots of control over how you display your information inside of something like React or uh, Gatsby or something like that. Flexible and powerful APIs, a rich set of APIs that you can work with. You get a GraphQL layer. This is really, really important, people. And then uh, they've got a little bit of information on choosing uh, some of the stuff that we just talked about, a Jamstack CMS, static site integrations, what is the Jamstack and that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about those things, you can go there and read a little bit more. Now, I also wanna say I have been doing a conversion of my personal site, James Q Quick site, from embedded markdown files for my blog to Sanity in the last couple of weeks. And I've got a playlist that I'll link here so that you can go and check out those videos as well and you can get a much much deeper learning experience of, of how Sanity works in the real world. So I wanna go ahead and get started. If you uh, are new to Sanity, you'll need to sign up you will probably be given the option when you start to start with a starter project. And that's what we're going to do today. So let me grab the link over here. And like I said, you probably already have this option as you sign up. But if you get to the point where you've already signed up and you missed that option, for example, uh, you can come to this site, which is uh, sanity.io slash docs starter on sanity IO create. So come here. I can link this in the show notes as well. And I'm gonna choose a starter project of a blog with Gatsby. Now, what this is going to do, it's gonna do a lot of really amazing stuff. I'm just gonna rename this as demo. And what you'll want to do in here is connect this up to both GitHub and Netlify. And I'm gonna go ahead and start generating this project. You'll have to log into both of those accounts. I'm gonna start generating this and I'll tell you exactly what Sanity does. Sanity is going to create uh, one repository for you inside of your GitHub. So it's going to create a GitHub repository for you. Inside of that GitHub repository, it's going to have a front end, which is a Gatsby project, a static site generator project, and a back end, which is the Sanity Studio. Now, this is the key point with Sanity that you need to understand is you manage the dashboard. Sanity has their dashboard, but you manage it and you deploy it, which is a little bit different than other headless CMS options where you just go to the browser to interact with the dashboard. 
Now you have full control over that dash over that sanity dashboard. Now the implications of this are really interesting. It's a little bit of overhead, right? Because you have to manage it, you have to deploy it. But in this case with the starter stuff, it really did all of the deployment for me. So you don't even have to worry about it. And with that, since you have access to that code, the dashboard is basically just a react project and you can fully customize that thing in any way that you want to, which is actually really interesting. So that is one of my favorite features about sanity specifically is that you have the full ability to customize everything about it. My other favorite feature that I haven't gotten into yet is the pricing. Let's look at that really quickly because with lots of, with lots of headless CMS options, there's a big jump between the free tier and the, uh, whatever the next tier up is. And sanity obviously has that big jump too with $200 a month, but they don't advertise this very well. In my opinion, under the generous quota, you can see in here, you can pay a few bucks a month for specific things if you need them. So if you need uh, extra gigs of assets, you can pay $1 for every two gigs of assets per month. Uh, you can pay for additional API requests and you can do that individually as kind of an a la carte thing, which I really like. The last thing I really like about Sanity is they've been amazing in support on Twitter. I've gotten contacted uh, from the founder of Sanity and he helped me out. And then also had a uh, person from developer relations come and join me for streams to hands-on help me uh, through my migration. So let's look at uh, what we got created. Um, it created the Sanity Studio and it created our blog here. And it's the blog is still building. And what it did, let me close out these two tabs. It connected that up inside of Netlify. So it created two different sites in Netlify, one for the front end and one for the studio. All right, so right here, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Sanity Studio. Now remember, they have already, all of this has been taken care of for me where it's deployed the studio out to Netlify. So this is the real live URL for my studio and then it's authenticated. So because my Sanity account is tied to my GitHub account, no one else can log in here unless I added a user except for me. And then inside of here, you see some really good stuff. You see that um, you get little Netlify widgets for both of the sites. So it says the Sanity Studio is done. It's been deployed. It's successful. The blog is actually building uh, and that's fine. So one of the things that we can do is we can go see that at Netlify by clicking the manage at Netlify and you'll see, I actually have a previous one from doing this demo before. You'll see I've got these two different sites out here. I could come into Netlify and it says hadn't been deployed. That's because it's building. And so I get everything in, the, in a Netlify site that I'm used to. So I'm gonna go back to my dashboard and you can see uh, different pieces of information about your project. So the project ID, uh, you can see uh, the front end link, the back end, and notice that they have highlighted GraphQL, which we will need to make sure that we deploy uh, to get out there. So uh, users, just me for the most part. And then we've got our data, which is blog post. And this is the editor that I think you will really like. I've really liked so far with different blog posts. You add fields in here, you can have images, and then you get down uh, to the very bottom and you get uh, rich text in the form of the body. Now this is using the portable text standard that I mentioned earlier with Sanity. And that's, that's kind of a whole uh, bigger story to get into. There is a little bit to learn there, but it does give you some really nice features in how you fully control how you display the information in your site. So if we look at the different pieces of content here, we've got uh, settings, we've got then blog posts, authors, and categories. So if we look at blog posts, we can see all the posts and scroll through these. And this is what your data looks like. It's actually a really nice editor and you have control fully over how to customize this thing. And I'll show you that in a second. So the thing I want to do is uh, I could actually go and show you inside of here. It created this new repository behind the scenes and we get a little warning about we, we should probably update some stuff. I'll do that in a second. So let me, uh, let me grab this clone URL and let's scroll over to Hyper. I've done this in the past. So let's do a, a new Git clone in my demos directory. And then let's open it up in Sanity Gatsby blog. All right, so this is open in VS Code. The key thing here is you get two folders. You get a studio folder, which is the management studio for Sanity, and you get the web folder, which is your Gatsby project. So to get all of this stuff running, I could CD into the web directory and I could do, let's see, let's double check what the command is here. Under the package.json, the script is uh, dev. So I could run npm run dev. 
And this will this will run a Gatsby site after, obviously, I do an NPM install. Have to install the packages after you download. So I'll give that a second and I'll come back here in a second. All right, so that finished all installing. And then with that, we can do an NPM run dev for our web project. And that will do, now that we've got all our packages installed, it will go ahead and do a, a run, or it'll run Gatsby develop and it'll run a live reloading server for Gatsby. And if this, if you're not familiar with Gatsby, don't overthink this part. I'm just showing you how this works with the pre-made projects. You could connect this obviously with any sort of project that you want. And this is going to open up and open up in 8,000. And now I can actually see my blog running locally here. I can click on the details page and go and see this and blah, 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 blah. So that looks really cool. And then the other thing we can do is we can CD into the studio directory and we can do an NPM install there as well. Now this will go ahead and install the packages specifically for the web directory, which is, or excuse me, the studio directory, which is the actual sanity project itself. So we'll give another minute for that to install and then we'll come back in a second. While that's installing, I pulled open one link uh, that you may be interested in. And that is, let's get back in to our dashboard here. If you notice, uh, we've got this getting started with your project section over here in the dashboard. You probably don't want that long term. So they've got an article here, a link of how or in the docs, how to remove that thing. And it's just a it's just a little setting here that you can put in your in your sanity.json file. So once you're ready to get rid of those helpful links, you can go and get rid of it with this here. All right, looks like this finished. Now we can run npm run dev in this directory for the studio. And the cool thing about Sanity Studio is it's just a create or just a React app. I don't know if they use create React app as a base or not, but it's just React. So again, you have full control over where you deploy this thing, although it's already taken care of with the starters, uh, any custom code that you wanna write, you can do anything in there that you want. So that's the real power of Sanity. So this is opening up in 333, localhost 333, and good, it's there. That's all we need to do to be able to run the dashboard locally. Now I do wanna highlight uh, under here, there's a list, a bunch of updates in here, and it says you can run Sanity Upgrade to be able to take care of this. So. I had a little bit of an issue earlier where I ran Sanity Upgrade. And what this will do is Sanity will go ahead and update all of its packages. And then in theory, what we would do is just commit that to the master branch, which would tell Netlify to go ahead and rebuild the dashboard. But there will be one thing. Once you run the Sanity Upgrade, you might come across an issue where the package lock file has not been updated to reflect the versions that are inside of the package.json. So, uh, I'll show you in a second. All you need to do is run one command to be able to solve that problem of just doing a fresh install or just another install of your packages. So what this looks like is the, they're showing you what all the upgrades were right there. And then all you need to do is run npm install inside of the studio directory again, and it will go ahead and update the package lock JSON file so that it and the package or package lock file is it? Yes, yeah, a JSON file. Package lock.json and the package.json file will be in sync with each other. And after this gets done, we'll just commit all of this code and then send it out to our master branch, and that will trigger a build in Netlify. So we'll give this a second to finish. All right, so that install finished. Now, what we want to do is I've got some shortcuts in here. I'm going to git add all and then uh, git commit and say upgraded sanity. So don't just ignore the shortcuts. They're just doing basic get stuff. And then all I'm doing is checking those changes in and pushing to the master branch. So if we come back to our dashboard, the one that's already hosted in Netlify, if we come back here, we can see that both the studio and the blog are building now. And we can go to manage sites at Netlify. This will open up in Netlify. We can go to the studio and just kind of show that this is, uh, it's, it's found that it needs to do a build. So it's kind of waiting or about to do that build. So this thing will go ahead and do a build here in a second. Now, while that's building inside of Netlify, let's run this thing locally again with npm run dev. And I just wanna show you how you can customize what fields and things are associated with your types in Sanity. So if I look in the source for the studio inside of here, there's schemas and then there's documents and then you see the different objects, the types that we worked with inside of the studio. You can see those right here. And it's basically just a JSON object 
of all of the different pieces of information that you need. So let's look at this really quickly, localhost 333 again. And if we look at the blog post, for example, we can see all of these and notice the pieces of information specifically that we have title slug published at main image and so on. And those things line up with the title slug published at main image and so on and so on. So all of that stuff is defined right here inside of this JSON file. And I just want to show you a quick example of how we could add another field and you could get more into this obviously later on. But let's say I want to include a video link. So a lot of my blog posts also have YouTube videos embedded in them. So I want to create or include a video link and I can do a type of string. And then the title, this will be basically the display name and this will be the link for the video. And then the description lastly is basically the text that the user will see to tell them uh, what should go in here. So this should be uh, basically the same kind of thing, but link for the video doesn't really matter. So if I save this, this will auto refresh the sanity studio. It looks like maybe I broke this because I need a comma and is everything else? Okay. I think that's all right. So will that start back up, start it back up. And then inside of here now, uh, real time inside of this uh, local copy, I'm getting my link for the video. So that, pro that property is there. I can start to use that thing. Now the one other thing you want to do is anytime you add additional fields or anything like that, you want to make sure that you update the actual GraphQL layer or deploy this thing to the GraphQL layer. So right now we're working with our management studio, but it's all well locally. And then there's the deployed version on Netlify. None of that matters. All of the actual data lives on sanity servers out there somewhere. The GUI is just a way for you to interact with that and give you customization over how to interact with it. So with that data living out there, we need to tell Sanity itself, hey, you need to go ahead and use this new definition for our schemas so that the GraphQL part in Sanity gets updated as well. So let me, uh, let's open the package.json here. There's a command built in to run this. So npm, not bod, but npm graph ql deploy. So we'll run this command and that will send all of the new definitions for the schema out to Sanity IO. And it's saying there's some uh, change, uh, dangerous changes in here. Uh, I feel good about what I'm doing, so I'll go ahead and say yes. This thing has been deployed. And then what's really cool is in Gatsby, if we stop Gatsby, now this is a specific thing to Gatsby that you don't have everywhere, but embedded in Gatsby is basically a GraphQL Explorer that we can look at in a second and we'll see that the GraphQL layer in Sanity has been updated. So uh, Sanity, or excuse me, Gatsby is running at 8,000. And then the GraphQL layer is slash dash dash or underscore underscore GraphQL. Inside of here, let me get rid of all of these. If I look at all Sanity posts, that's the thing that's going to query all of the posts from Sanity, as you might expect. And then nodes, and then look down here, here's the video link, and I can select title too. And this will show you all the video links are null because I have an updated one, but... If I then came in and updated this thing and published it, if I publish this now in my query for GraphQL, I should see one of these comes back with a video link. So this is really quick, almost real time experience of updating stuff inside of Sanity and then getting access to that stuff inside of uh, wherever you want to query it from. And in this case, the graphical editor for uh, experimenting with GraphQL. So all in all, Sanity is an amazing product. I am moving my personal James Q Quick site over to Sanity. It's actually live now. I'm actually using uh, the Sanity uh, backend for it now, and I'm still making some updates, but it really is amazing. Again, if you wanna check out the other streams that I've done, I've got a playlist for Sanity and Gatsby. You can check that out and you can watch more. In the meantime, I'm curious, are you using a headless CMS option yourself if so, which one are you using? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. I want to thank you for checking out the video. Again, if you enjoyed it, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, turn on that notification bell. You'll get updates on all the content that I come up with. And I hope to see you in a future video. So we'll wrap this up and I'll see you next time.